Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist and on this channel I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. That's both indoors and outside. And in today's video, we are doing part three of Plantmas, which is my knockoff of Vlogmas, where I go over all 17 essential plant nutrients every single day back to back, counting us down to Christmas. I know a ton of you are sitting at home, maybe on holidays, less things to do, baking, and you need something to watch. And I'm going to provide that to you in a planty version so you can learn while doing mindless stuff around the house. Because who doesn't like that? Every plant nerd on the plant, every nerd, correction, every nerd on the planet needs to be learning while doing mindless, pointless things. I, I know I do personally watch documentaries while I'm Christmas baking. So yeah, maybe it's just me. But anyways, if you didn't stick around for the first two, first off, you're going to like this video. You're going to comment below how excited you are for plant mist and how excited you are for the second version of plant mist. You're going to hit that subscribe button and then you're going to go watch the first two and come back to this one because well, you, you probably could get away with just watching this one. It's not too intense, but anyways, I digress. Let's jump straight into today's video all about copper. So far we have officially done nitrogen and chlorine and now we're working on copper. So copper is one of the 17 essential plant nutrients that a plant needs to survive and thrive both indoors and outside and it is a micronutrient. So we've talked about the fact that macronutrient really isn't a great term when we're talking about plants. It's either primary, secondary or micronutrient and copper falls into the micronutrient category. Now, when we talk about macro versus micro, it's not in the sense of health. It's, you know, how doctors or something would, or nutritionists would talk about actual nutrients. We're actually talking about it in, or how a chemist would refer to it as in like big molecule versus little molecule. We actually are talking about it in the quantity a plant needs to survive and thrive. So if it is a micronutrient, it needs literally next to nothing in regards to the nutrient, but it does need some. So copper is something that's actually used in the lignin process. So I'm not going to talk too much about lignin synthesis only because it's kind of boring, a little bit irrelevant, although important to plants. If you guys want to Google it, let me know if you do want a video on it. I will do it. I just don't think it's going to satisfy your itch for lack of a better term. It's a pretty complicated process to even learn about. So just let me know if you do want to learn about it and I will be happy to include that. Now with copper, it is a mobile. So we talked about mobile nutrients such as nitrogen in the first episode of plant mist. And that is when the nutrient is able to move and be allocated wherever the plant needs it. So if the plant sends a signal, we need nitrogen to this leaf, this root, this shoot, then it's going to allocate the nitrogen there and ultimately deplete the nitrogen of other areas in the plant if it is in a deficient uh, deficiency issue. Now, if it's in a scenario where it's abundant and within balance where it needs to be, then it's just going to equally allocate wherever it needs to go. And the nutrient is going to move wherever it feels it may be necessary. So a great example is uh, chloroplasts, for example, they will move throughout the plant depending on where the sun is. So if the sun is coming in through um, the like in through a window and it realizes that more photosynthesis can take place on, you know, this side of the plant or this side of the leaf, the chloroplast will mobilize to that area of the plant along with the nitrogen. And if the sun is too intense and the chloroplasts want to try to save themselves or avoid damage, they will actually move away from that light and they'll move to the side of the plant or the area of the plant that is safer in this case. But with something like copper, because it is immobile, meaning it is not mobile in the plant, it literally is sucked up into the plant, it is put into the xylem, and it is shot straight up to the, the next possible growth point. So it's going to go to the newest version of growth and therefore deficiencies, toxicities, all are going to show up in that new growth, both in the roots, which obviously we're not going to see very often, but in particular the shoots and the leaves. So a really classic sign of, uh, of a copper deficiency is the apical meristems kind of just disintegrating 
going necrosis and just dying off. And you'll see this, I have seen this, especially in house plants, I've seen this actually. And I think that it has more to do with a pH issue because potting soil tends to have a lower pH. Typically your apical meristem will just keep on falling off or dying. And this is a sign of either copper uh, deficiency or excess. I'm leaning more towards deficiency because I don't know many houseplant people that even really actively apply copper to their, their pots or their potted plants whatsoever. Now, with that being said, if you test your potting soil and you have really low pH and you're noticing that your pH compared to this nutrient availability chart here is coinciding, then it could be, uh, if it's right in the wheelhouse of excess copper availability, it may be the case where you're ending with some toxicity. So it may be time to add like a lime, for example, to our potting soil or something of that nature to help bring that pH back up. So other things that can actually affect uh, copper availability in our soil, excess nutrients, in particular, potassium, phosphorus, potassium, phosphorus, and some micronutrients out there all can cause a deficiency in micronutrients only because it ultimately doesn't allow for the copper to infiltrate the roots or the plant because it's being occupied by molecules that are a bit bigger. And I kind of talked about this when I was talking about um, nitrogen and specifically different forms of nitrogen. So we're looking at ammonium versus nitrate and nitrate doesn't have as many bodyguards as something like ammonium does with the four hydrogens surrounding it. So it can bully its way into sites where it can be uptaken compared to that of something not as tough and durable such as nitrate. So the way that copper is taken up into the plant is with just the base copper ion. There's nothing attached to it, it is copper ion all on its own and this is done through something we call mass flow. Now mass flow we have not discussed yet in the plant mist series so we'll talk about it here today and mass flow is a mechanism in which plants take up nutrients but they take it up through a straw. It's kind of like a river flowing into the plant. That means it doesn't matter what concentration of copper is present in the soil or in the plant. It doesn't really matter if the roots in direct content or contact or not. It is completely dependent on the rates of evapotranspiration. So basically how quickly the plant is losing water through the stomata through respiration. As that water uh, is released through the stomata through respiration, the pressures within the plant change and ultimately it acts like a straw. So once you fill up your mouth, you swallow and then you still, you're still thirsty. So you suck up through the straw and everything in the straw goes in. The whole smoothie ends up you know, in your digestive tract. And the same thing is happening here when we're talking about copper and nitrogen actually as well. So there is no shut off to say, hey, I got too much. Hey, you don't have enough. There are nutrients out there that work on diffusion, osmosis, and that will need a concentration gradient. But in this case, it is taking whatever is available at the time because that is what is dissolved in the water. That is what is dissolved in the soil solution. And therefore it's just drinking the water in the soil solution and it gets taken up in it. So again, copper in excess can be dangerous because there's no shut off. It literally is taking that stuff up whether or not it wants it. Now, copper is one of those nutrients that can also be uptaken through the leaves. This is due to its immobility in the plant itself. So if you actually foliar apply this, if a lot of fungicides actually use copper, just a heads up. And so it will take it up through the stomata and through the leaves. And in some cases, this may be a great mechanism to get copper into your plant, especially if your pH range is outside of the bioavailability of copper up ion uptake. So that's all I have for you guys today on copper. Nice short video. I hope you stay tuned for the rest of the plant mist series. We will do, be doing the next one literally tomorrow. Like I said, 17 days all the way up to Christmas. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below what you learned today about copper and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.